Hi, and welcome to another episode of How to Hack. So today we're going to discuss about using Network Mapper. So the whole idea of using MMAP is actually to help us to be able to map out all the devices, systems within your enterprise network. And if you're a computer hacker, you definitely need this to find that vulnerable system or device that you can actually exploit and gain unauthorized access in the system. So there are going to be a lot of parameters, a lot of options that you can use in NMAP. And it is very important for you to understand what the options are and when to utilize them so that you can be faster and can accelerate your time into compromising those systems. And if you're a security practitioner, chances are you want to look for so-called rogue devices within your environment and be able to see what are some of the potential unknown devices in your in your network. So some of it are like virtual LAN that are created off devices that are connected to your enterprise network. So those are the kind of devices that you want to be really careful of because chances are you want to make sure that you have control over all the devices and equipment, network equipment within your environment. So we're going to go through how to use MMAP and enjoy the demonstration. All right, so over here we have Color Linux running and all you got to do is enter NMAP and we'll be able to see all the listed commands that can actually help you get started and what are the parameters and options. So for today, we're just going to go through some of the really easy and simple, quick to quick to learn and quick to understand type of parameters that you can use for your scanning and your network, whether you're an enterprise or a computer hacker. So this will be useful for you to understand about how your how your enterprise network environment is running on. So as a start, we can enter nmap dash sv. So if you look over here, when we were to screw up, what exactly does does sv actually stand for? So once you can see the answer over here is that SV actually stands for the probe open ports to determine service version information. So we're trying to understand what kind of header information are we getting from the different ports, the different kind of services running on the service. And with this, it's a slightly more aggressive scan because you are probing each of the services. So if the, if the machine actually has a host detection system, there's a chance, there's a huge chance that we can actually pick up that kind of information that's scanning on your environment. So as a start, I'm going to go to my host machine and I'm going to check out the IP address. So over here, you can see I have IPv4 address of 192.168.1.13. So mmap-sv192.168.1.3. And you hit enter. So mmap is going to take a while to scan through this information over here on the machine. So while it is scanning, we're going to go through another command that we can use on mmap. So looking over here, I have another terminal open. So what we can actually do is there are many times where you actually need to scan through the entire network address. So you just have to enter mmap 192.168.1. Asterisk. So asterisk actually stands for all the IP addresses available from 1 all the way to 254 within this particular subnet. So you click enter and we'll be scanning the entire network for more information on all the possible devices within this particular IP range. So looking back over here, we can see that the MMAP has completed a scan on the host of 192.168.1.3. And we can see a few services running. So we see that we have RPC running. We have NetBIOS SSN. We have also a HTTP API 2.0 running. And of course, we are able to see that this operating system is running on Windows. However, we did not really get much information out of this because this is a a typical scan is actually pretty accelerated. So what's going what happened during this scan is that we are looking at some some ideas of a quick quick understanding or quick overview of what kind of host it is already running on. So of course sometimes we really have to have the a great idea of what exactly what type of operating system that we are scanning against because operating system type actually determines the kind of exploit we'll be using to gain malicious access into the system. So another command that we can actually use to help us find out what it, what kind of operating system it is actually running on is nmap dash capital A followed by the IP address again. So capital A actually help us find out the OS and version detection scanning script. So you just got to hit enter and it's going to take a while again, it's probably another 15, 20 seconds. So looking back, okay, the, the other, this scanning over on a network is going to take some time because the scanning of the network actually requires nmap to go through the entire list of the IP address from 1 to 254, so it's going to take some time. So moving forward to another command that we can actually use is also to find out if a host or network is protected by a firewall. So 
just like just like the previous command that we use over here, what we see was a dash sv. So instead, we'll be using. Okay, so we actually got to here, and you can enter nmap dash sa one i two one six eight dot one dot three. So this will actually help us determine the kind of firewall that is actually running on the host machine. So you might be questioning why are we running so many different kind of commands on a single host? Why why isn't there a one size fit all kind of solution where we can put in all the parameters and really have a great idea or understanding of the system in place? The issue is that because every machine is so is so unique to itself, and in if you were scanning on an enterprise network server, you'd be seeing that all the servers have different kind of configurations, different kind of services running, and chances are you need multiple parameters, multiple options to help you determine and be specific on the kind of machine you're exploiting against. So it is it is salient that you actually run through multiple parameters, options, and not just using MMAP, but also using other scanning tools for you to understand more about the, the machine you're targeting. So all right, we managed to see over here uh, what kind of information that we got. So we got a MAC address, we got, and, and what we got was uh, the host is up. So all 1,000 scan ports were filtered, and we, we realized that there is indeed a firewall running on this particular machine, car 192.168.13. So, of course, moving moving back to this, well, we were scanning the entire network using MMAP 192.168.1.*. So we completed the scan, and we see we have 192.168.1.1 running, and we have multiple ports open on this on this machine and then moving downwards we had 192.168.1.3 as well so it's the same result as what we had scanned earlier and moving down some more we see we have dot five and again we see that the host is up but we can't see any port opening we have one seven again host is up but we are not seeing any items or any services running on this machine so great thing is on 1.8 we actually see that we have a iPhone sync running. So chances are, to a, to a large extent, this is one of the iPhones that are connected to my network. And then of course we have 1.9 again. We see that the host is up, is replying probably to ping or some probe request, but it's not it's not opening any services. So again 1.9.19 again. So it's the same thing. However, you know we will look at 2.5.4. And 254, we can see that we have FTP running, HTTP running, HTTPS running. So if you have FTP running, there's a, there's a good chance that we can use some some techniques that you see from my other videos, where we can actually brute force into the FTP access. And that is what we got from all the the list of available machines within this network. So that's, that's great because we have enough information and we can actually do a specific scan on each of the machines that we see are actually running. And in the end, we'll be able to find out all the services and all the items that are actually running in the machine. So moving back to the first, the, the command that we run, dash A. So over here, we see all the different running services. And moving downwards, we could see the MAC addresses. So MAC addresses are actually pretty important if you think in terms of wireless connection. Mac filtering is actually one of the one of the first line of defenses that are actually used to gain so-called access to have authorized access into the system. So if you're unable, even after cracking the wireless uh, password, if you're unable to access into the system, the MAC address might be something that actually provides you the the opportunity to move the attack forward by copying the MAC address and then mimicking the MAC address and entering into the the enterprise network. So of course, as we as we move downwards, we could see. Uh, the kind of operating system they are being gassed over. So we can see that it's, it's guessing to a 93% probability of Microsoft Windows Vista 7 2008 of own. So over here is also looking at all the different kind of potential operating systems that is that is possible. And another important point is all the network distance. So network distance is actually one hop away. So one hop away meaning that we are actually not going through any kind of firewall, not going through any kind of routers or switches within the environment. Or any kind of firewall that is that has, might have some kind of filtering or detection going on, so it's pretty it's pretty straightforward for us to try to attack this machine without detecting, without triggering any network defenses. So of course we have a whole script as was uh, ran against this particular machine, and again of course we have more information that are useful for us. So we see that this is being uh, specific into a Windows 10 Pro 14393. So we actually got a version number of this operating system. And if you look at some of the exploits from Metasploit is that the the exploits are platform specific 
for every application or service that we're trying to exploit against. And there you have it. You have seen how we demonstrated using the different options and parameters and using all of them in conjunction in NMAP so that you have a better understanding of the security posture in your enterprise network. So if you are a computer hacker, chances are you really want to see what are some of the devices within the different virtual LANs, within the different subnet networks, and be able to find that one single device that has a vulnerable exploit, which you can finally attack on and be able to be able to clinch onto that particular system. And from there, you'll be able to perpetrate into different kind of uh, devices, systems, and, and enterprise servers as a start and be able to get all the kind of unauthorized accesses that you require in order to gain more accesses and privileges in the environment. And of course, if you are a security practitioner, you are a system administrator, you have to harden the network environment, you have to deploy firewall system, filtering systems, intrusion detection systems, network intrusion detection systems, and be able to look out for what are some of the telltale signs of an attack that is ongoing, what are some of the scanning that is being imp implemented in your enterprise network, and be able to pick up those information and be able to trickle notification where you can finally remediate or to put in more configuration or network policies to disable those hackers from going or gaining even more foothold into your environment. So if you, if you enjoy what you have watched today, feel free to subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below.